A fruit tree is a fantastic investment. It only costs a small amount of money to purchase a fruit tree. That's if you haven't grown it from seed yourself. And you invest a little bit of money across time, but quite a bit of time, more than money, in terms of fertilizing, pruning, and caring for a tree to get it to grow to this type of size and to look for fruit. So doing anything to damage a tree or to cut a tree down almost feels like a crime. However, this year, as I am pruning, I realized that I've got to make some hard decisions here. What I have decided is that this particular tree has to go. The reason is that it's far too close to the other trees around it. On the right hand side here I have a Packham pear that has grown really big and doing nicely and this year we had one of the best crops ever off it. Behind this tree there is a Williams pear. Now it hasn't been doing so well. It didn't flower last year, it hasn't produced much fruit at all. And I really would like to get some fruit off that Williams because it comes earlier. Now this particular tree is a Nashi and the fruit that it's produced hasn't been that exciting. It last year was very small and very little of it was consumed because it was simply too small to bother with. So the decision I've made is that for the good of the other trees, this tree has to come down. Now, we do have another Nashi over here on the left, which actually produces larger fruit and tastier fruit than this one. So really, it's not going to impact the food that we have to eat. So I'm going to get to and cut this tree down. Now, because there's other fruit trees around it, I can't just cut it down like you would with a chainsaw at the bottom. It's going to have to come down a limited time so that there's no damage to other trees. My tool of choice for cutting these branches off is a reciprocating saw. Now, I only purchased a reciprocating saw for, for the first time a few months ago. And when I first bought one, I had a particular job that I needed it for and really didn't think I'd put it to a lot of use. And initially I purchased one that had a cord on it. Once I got it home and had a look, I realized that I was going to use it for a lot more than I thought and that I'd made a mistake. So I immediately took it back to the shop and exchanged it for a cordless one. Now I'm not sponsored by DeWalt. I chose DeWalt simply because I already had other DeWalt tools and it's very useful to keep the platform intact so that you can exchange batteries and only have one battery charger. But something like this really is good for a job where it would be a lot slower doing it by hand and it's not really big enough to justify bringing a chainsaw in, nor would it be as safe with a chainsaw. So a cordless reciprocating saw is a really useful tool in that type of situation.
cutting the base of this tree with this saw might be really pushing the blade a little bit past what it's meant to cut. This is not really a pruning blade, but I'll give it a go, see what it'll do. We'll put it to the test. Probably would have been easier with a chainsaw, but just shows what you can do with a reciprocating saw. Very useful on a homestead or in a small garden for doing little jobs like this. Now, the base of this, I'm going to actually try a technique I've seen on YouTube. Because the rootstock they use for these trees is very prone to suckering, as you see with this one and more here beside it it really needs to be killed off otherwise this is going to sucker like crazy for a long time. So what I'm going to try is drilling holes in this and filling it with Epsom salts. Now that is supposed to kill these roots off and allow them to break down fairly quickly according to some YouTube claims but I don't know, it really wasn't conclusive, so I'm going to give it a try and just see if it works. It certainly won't hurt anyway. The concept, as I understand it, with this Epsom salts treatment is that the Epsom salts would suck the sap out of the roots and uh, so kill it and stop it growing. So getting plenty of it on here and into the holes and also I will cover the stump because I don't want the rain to just wash the Epsom salts away and dilute it but want the salts to suck the sap mixture out of the roots so yeah so we'll get as much as we can get a nice stack on there and then I'll put cover over it to keep the rain off. And of course I have to find something to put on there to stop it blowing away. So now with this down, it's really opened up the area and the sun's going to be able to get in here so much better, particularly for this Williams pear. It's really going to get some good sun now and hopefully we'll get some flower and some fruit off that. And also the Bartlett here I think is going to really benefit as well. A lot more airflow through is going to mean less disease, less tendency towards mildew in the area. So I think we're going to have a good result from taking this tree down. It goes against the grain to cut down a fruit tree, but sometimes it is a necessary thing to do. But one of the lessons from this is that if you're planting fruit trees, you really do need to consider the size that they're going to grow to and give them sufficient space. Again with this tree I have to make some decisions. This was a seedling apple that I rescued from a garden and it had grown in a very bad way. It was on an extreme angle and even when I planted it, while I tried to get it as straight as I could, there was no way I could plant it upright because of the way the roots were. I've been encouraging this branch to the side here in giving it more space in the goal that that would actually take over from this other area of the tree. Now I think the time has come to cut this main area of the tree out and to let the smaller area take over. This branch hopefully will become the new tree and I'll probably pull it to try and get it more upright and as yet this new section hasn't produced any fruit but we don't get a lot of fruit off the other. It does produce some, but not a lot, and it doesn't really justify the size that it is uh, in terms of the amount of fruit. It's very tasty fruit that we do get. Probably taking this out will mean that we may not get fruit for another year or two, but we can only try and see.
So again, I'm going to use the reciprocating saw to cut this out. It will makes the job much, much faster than doing it by hand. Now that this piece is gone and out of the road, I can work on this remaining branch to actually turn it into a nice tree. Because it's had the other there, it's sloped over trying to get away from it. I want to bring it and prune it so that it's more upright, so that it will tend to grow more upright. I may come back later and actually put something to hold it and try and bring it up. But in the meantime, there's a bit of pruning that I can do. This one, for example, probably can go so that this piece here now become, will become the leader and that will tend to bring it straighter. And as it grows, it will tend to straighten up. So I'll try and take this out as clean as I can. It's a bit tricky when you're in the middle of a way like this because you're confined by the other branches and that makes it a bit harder to come in there and work. So you just have to be very careful to try not to actually bruise these others. I'll come in and reduce this side down a lot so these can come right back. Now as I said I don't really expect to see any fruit off it in this next season. That might happen but not what I'd be expecting. Probably the following year. So that's an example that sometimes you have to take some radical steps in an orchard to correct mistakes of the past or accidents of the past as of this tree. It's just the way it grew as a seedling. But taking those hard choices should result in a much better product and better fruit, better trees in the long term.